Okay, welcome to learning the Tom Paritza. And in this video, I'm going to lay down three rules that you're going to have to follow if you're going to learn this tape. The first one is, don't skip any lessons. Now let's compare this to building a building. If you were building a building, would you build a 10th floor first? We well, can't. The building collapses. Same thing in music. You have to learn each lesson like a floor on a building. They've got to build upon each other for you to know the following lessons. So if you skip a lesson, you will not be able to understand what's happening later on. So don't skip any lessons. Number two is I want you to memorize each lesson. Everything that you're learning here has to be in your head. If you don't memorize it, you'll be looking at your book while you're reading music and you can't do that. So memorize each lesson individually and it won't be a problem later on. Because each lesson is short and the information on it is easy to remember. So memorize them one at a time. Number three is you have to practice each lesson. Okay? Now that sounds simple enough, but I want to tell you how to practice also. This is the way I want you to practice. When you get one of these lessons, and I tell you what to do in it, start off at any pace that's comfortable and easy for you to play it. If it's really slow, that's okay. Start off real slow. And do it. And do it correctly. When you can do it at whatever speed you're starting at, then do it again, but faster. A little bit faster. When you can play it right at that speed, do it again. A little bit faster than that. And each time you practice it, build up speed. And I want you to get it to a tempo that's where the song sounds right, correct to you, okay? And if you don't do this, what happens is you learn the song real slow. And you go to play with somebody else. You can't keep up with them. And you can't do that. You've got to play it at the correct speed the song goes. So the way you do that is at increments. You start off slow and you do it a little bit faster and then a little bit faster until you can play it correctly. And I want to let you know that when uh, musicians that are already playing have gotten new songs, they didn't start off playing it very fast at the beginning either. They start off slow and they gradually increase. So that's what I want you to do too. Okay, that's it for my practice rules, but you must follow them. Remember, don't skip any lessons. Memorize each lesson and practice each lesson. Now, one more thing before we go on into the tape. I know some of you have a G instruments and some of you have D instruments. Now let me explain to you the difference. If your instrument's a G instrument, that means your first string is tuned to the G note. And if your instrument is a D, your first string is tuned to a D note. So what does that mean? How can you tell? Well, the easiest way to find out is to ask the maker of your instrument. If that doesn't work, if you can't get a hold of him or her, then on a piano, hit the G note above the middle C. And if it corresponds to your first string, then your instrument's tuned to a G. If it's a D instrument, you hit the D above middle C on the piano. Okay, if you don't have a piano, let's try something else. Get a tuning fork. It's tuned to a G or a D and see if your strings match up. And uh, these are three methods I would recommend for finding out how your instrument is tuned. Like I said before, the easiest way to find out is to call the maker of the instrument and find that out. Or another Tom Baritza player that has an instrument already tuned up can tell you too. So I'll stop right here. Remember my practice rules, because you're going to have to use them throughout the video. And I'll see you in lesson number one.
welcome back. Before we go any further, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Ed Sindesich, and I'm from Sherville, Indiana. And you know, I'd like to give you a little bit of background, since we'll be seeing a lot of each other on this video. I have been playing tambour for over 20 years. I play with the Plavi Vietar combo. And I'm also directing one of the adult ensembles here in Indiana. I'd also like to remind you that we have a booklet that I sent you with this video, and it will follow each lesson on the videotape. And it would be very helpful for you to look at that as you're watching the video. Now this lesson, we're going to learn the terms for the parts of your tamborizo. And I'd like to remind you that a preem, a brach, a cello, bugatia, and bass are all the instruments in the tamborizo family. And each one has similar terms for the same parts. Now we're going to use a brach for my example here today. And as we're doing this, I want you to think of your own body because many of the parts will follow in the same order as your body goes. So we're going to start with the top and this piece from here to here is called the head. Now on this head we have tuning keys. This brach happens to have five tuning keys. Your instrument may have more. Your instrument may have less. But this has five. Now, below the head and the tuning keys, there's a little plastic strip that runs across the top of your instrument. And this is called the nut. It holds your strings in place. Okay? That's called the nut. Now, below the nut, I'm going to turn this instrument right here, this. Below this nut, to this big piece right here, this area right here, it's called the neck. And on top of the neck, you have little metal strips. And they're called frets. And also on top of the neck of your instrument, in between the frets, some instruments have little white dots, or squares, or rectangles, and these are called position marks. And later on, I'll explain to you how you use them. But right now, remember that those dots or squares are called position marks. Now below your neck, from here, this whole entire area, the major part of your instrument, is called the body. The body of your instrument. And on top of your body, entire flat piece is called the top sounding board. Okay? And on your top sounding board, you have a scratch board. It's not made out of wood. It's a different material. It's used to protect the wood when you're playing the instrument. And in this instrument, usually in the middle of your tabra, you have a sounding hole. It allows the music to come out of your instrument. On this instrument, it's a round one, it's a round hole, but it doesn't have to be round, it could be any shape, depending on the maker of the tamborizo. Okay, below the scratch board, you have a plastic piece right here, and it's called the bridge, and it holds your strings in place in the bottom of your instrument. Below that bridge is a metal piece, it's called a tail piece, and it covers the attachment of your strings to your instrument. Okay. Now I'd like you to review these terms and, and know them. They're in your handout, the booklet that I gave you. After you know this, we're going to go on to lesson number two, and we'll start learning how to read music. I'll see you then.